Adam Sandler is one of the most powerful box office stars in the world today. For the past 10 years, he has been creating memorable characters on television and film. Here is a look at some of them. El Tonzo. El Inferno. El The price is wrong, bitch. I think you've had enough. No? Now you've had enough. All right, last time. Here he goes. Here he goes. God, there's a stick there. Somebody should move it. Some of us will never ever find true love. Like take, for instance, me. And I'm pretty sure that guy right there. And that lady with the sideburns. And basically everybody at table nine. Uh -huh. I would be honored if you played football for this team. Me? Play football? Yes. Thanks, but no thank, Coach. My mama won't let me play no football. We're gonna go home. You and I want to talk to Mama. Oh, oh, oh. Ma mama said. Ma mama said. My mama said. Mama said that. My mama, mama said that. My mama. Paul Thomas Anderson is the Academy Award-nominated filmmaker behind the critically acclaimed films *Boogie Nights* and *Magnolia*. His latest film is *Punch Drunk Love*. It has earned him the Best Director Award at this year's Cannes Film Festival and stars Sandler in what critics are calling the best performance of his career. <laughs> Here is the trailer from that film. Pleased to welcome Adam Sandler and Paul Thomas Anderson to this table to talk about that movie and many other things. All well, right. Thank all you right. very much. Great, Great to, to be here. Good evening. Good to see you again. <laughs> we were just saying this is the third or fourth? Third time. Third time here. Um, where did the idea for this come from? from time Magazine? Well, there's the Time Magazine helped. Yeah. There was a story about the guy who collected all this yeah. pudding, and which is a true story. A guy went and bought uh, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of pudding that equaled a million frequent flyer miles. So that helped. But, yeah. but the main impetus was wanting to write something for Adam. I think I had a, a lot of different chunks and ideas yeah. and notions in search of a story kind of thing. But meeting Adam was really the trigger to get to work. Okay, now let me just get on that, because it is the notion. You know he's box office. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it part that, but also <coughs> something else? It was something about him. Wasn't it all that? <laughs> yeah. I've or been, was it what? Go ahead. No, I've been trying to sell out for a while. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> so exactly. if you want to sell out, sell out big time. Go don't, right don't go man. half the way. You know. Get some of that Sandler no, money. Some of that Sandler money. <laughs> Ride that Sandler wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that I always, I always, I think that I think see they're trying to hitch themselves to you. All of them. You know. I got know it's Joe Roth out there and you. Yeah, all yeah. you guys are just. I tell that. you, Jonathan Demi too. Is, Demi too. Oh my God! Okay. We have a competition for Adam Sandler. Demi takes credit, you got by seven the... movies coming out. How many? I, I don't. I have no idea. Oh, I, have a, I, we, we, I have a production company too, so uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm here to work, Charlie. <laughs> exactly. Me too. That's the way I say. They say, "Why do you do a nightly show?" I'm here to work. Exactly. You know? I'm not going to be happy until I get a pig bell. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you want one? I want one of those things. I, it's made me a different man. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, man. It'll give you more energy. That's It'll I make need you better some. looking. I hope. It, more energy, more color in your face. I just you know, I got happier, to increase his vocabulary. That's what I'm looking to do. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I've got the doctor for you if you decide to do this Thank in about you. 50 years. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Does uh, he have so, a jacket also? Exactly. What are you talking about? Yeah. You need a jacket for the show? I've watched no, the show. No. I've seen guys they, not wearing absolutely. jackets. Absolutely. They've done almost everything here. So you get a call from him or yes. somebody. Yeah. Now, do you want to work with him? Well, here's what happened. Paul called uh, and asked to come and hang out. We were shooting Little Nicky at the time, another right. movie, and, Char uh, and uh, Paul comes over, hangs out uh, with me for about, we hung out for like five hours, say, mm -hmm. yeah. and he just, just talked about some of the stuff I've done in the past, and he's a Saturday Night Live fan, so we yeah. talked about that stuff. And I just thought he was a great guy, and I did also, I loved uh, Boogie Nights, and then a week later, 
uh, Magnolia came out and I yeah. saw that movie and I was like, well, this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. He's, he's pretty damn good, isn't he? <laughs> and he, and uh, he, uh, he said he wanted to work uh, together and do a movie together. Yeah. And, uh, and I was uh, just excited and he yeah. went to work. I mean, it, for you, knowing that you can make <clears throat> movies and lots of movies, to have the possibility of, of sort of stretching and working in a different right. direction with a guy who obviously is a craft, you know, is a craftsman. Right. Right. Yeah. It was a, it was exciting for for that reason for getting to do something different, yeah. getting to be with a guy that I, you know, it's nice to make new friends too in life, yeah. and it was nice to meet this guy and like him, and also you know, when you shoot a movie, you know you're going to be together a long time, and I was yeah. excited to, to try to accomplish something that I haven't uh, really done before. Yeah. But did this go ahead. Well, no, liking someone as an actor is one thing, but get, liking them as a person, you got to you got to yeah. know, all right, I, I, you're going to be fun to be with for a couple of years, because it's going to be yeah. a couple of years at the end of the day, and you're going to want to, you want to know them, and, and, and you want to know that they're going to have a similar work ethic. And Adam creates all his, his own movies, yeah. so you, it was just kind of like verifying what I thought about him to be the truth. It was yeah. sort of like, good, all right, I, I can see that you're a good guy. Are you really? <laughs> yeah, all right, you know? right. And, and only by hanging out can you figure out some of those stuff. Yeah. Here's yeah. what he had said about himself. He yeah. once said, I don't know if I'm the type of guy who wants to run the world like Spielberg <laughs> oh, <laughs> or retreat to a mansion in London like Kubrick. I just haven't figured it out yet. Well, that's a bit arrogant. No, it? It, was, it was a long time ago. Too, <laughs> yeah. <I mean>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Or just figure out how to be myself. Yeah, exactly. It might be a smart idea. Before we see the first clip, and we've seen the trailer, tell me what this movie is about and why. It's about getting in tune. It's a love story between Adam and Emily right. uh, about a guy with seven sisters right. uh, with four blonde crazy brothers coming after him. And it's just about getting in tune and finding your music, I think. That's what it is? What would you add to that? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, love, uh, loneliness, uh, being, uh, becoming happy with yourself and comfortable with yourself and, and trying to lose some insecurities and growing up. Getting out of your house. Getting out of your house. Roll yeah. tape. The first scene we'll see is in which you and, and Emily, uh, she plays Lena, meet for the very first time outside Barry's office. Here's that clip. Take a look. There's a piano in the street. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll see you later. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Maybe I'll see you later when I pick up my car. Okay. So who is Barry Egan? Uh, wow, that's a, yeah, Barry Egan. Uh, you know, Paul sometimes says uh, it's a lot of. I'm I'm a lot like Barry Egan. Yeah. I I think uh, I've seen my myself behave like Barry. I've seen my brother be like yeah. Barry. I've seen my friend uh, Judd act like Barry sometimes. I've seen that. I, I I stole from a lot of people in my life, yeah. and I and I just basically was trying to be this guy that uh, he created. That he created. Yeah. Yeah. Were you instantly ready to do this? I mean, after you met him and liked him. Yeah, I was instantly in. I was instantly all right. I want to. I want to. I didn't know what the movie was going to be. I remember when Paul uh, gave me the script and I read it and, and just I'm like, oh, this guy is me. Okay, this guy. Am I going to be able to do this? I was. I was. I was nervous, yeah. but I was in. I, there was no way I was going to say, I'm not doing this. Yeah, you want the experience is worth it. It was. You, did you want to change after Magnolia? I mean, did you say basically, look, I just did some very heavy film with a lot of heavy talent. You know, let me go in a different direction with someone who has a different kind of temperament. Completely. I was, and I think I was also in a good mood. 
You know, you sort of follow. Right. You always want to get away w from where you were last. Your just instinct is always like, I want to go left. You know, I can't stand any more cancer. I can't stand any more sadness. I've got to. And it was funny because at the time that I was finishing up the editing, like the chicken noodle soup to that t right. was Adam's.